Welcome to the God Only Encouraging Message and Prayer Series. Messages from the heart of God to confidently, boldly draw you near to the throne of grace that you may receive mercy for your failures and find grace to help in good time for every need. That appropriate help and well-timed help coming just when you need it. God gives you a personal invitation to come spend time with him and join the secret place of his presence where he pours his endless love in your heart to calm your mind and settle your soul and to encourage you. God wants you to know how truly loved you are and the benefits of him living in you and how truly valuable you are to God. Today, God wants you to hear his word. He wants you to know that he's sending a personal invitation for you to soak in his endless love that he's pouring in your innermost being to calm your heart, to calm your mind, and to let you know that he's given you a future and a hope that he planned before the beginning of the world, before the foundation of the world, and that he plans to accomplish every one of those things that he had written in his book for you and he will complete it because his word will never change about you nor what he's written his word about you because God is immutable that means he never changes and because he's omniscient that means that what he wrote about you and what he says about you is going to be true about you and then He has the power that comes to live in you by his spirit living in you to bring it all to pass. So you end up finding out when your life is finally over that Galatians, uh, that Ephesians 3.20 is correct. He did abundantly above what you can even ask, think, hope, or imagine because he loves you. He planned for you and he chose you to be his child, to be birthed into the family of God, to have God the Father living in you, just as he says in 2 Corinthians 6, 16, your body being the temple of the Holy Spirit, as he says in 1 Corinthians 6, 19, and Christ living in you, and it's no longer you who lives, but Christ lives in you, making sure that all the purposes and plans that God has for you is going to be accomplished through you because it's no longer you who live to have to depend on, but Christ living in you does it through you so you know it's going to be accomplished for you because God's living in you. You have been recreated in Christ Jesus. You're a new creature that never existed before. God didn't remake something old and put it in some old sack and just wash it. He made you a new creation an entirely new creation that never existed before. And he wants you to see yourself as he made you, not as the world wants to proclaim to you about how you used to do and what you used to do. That's just the enemy sitting there and sending fiery darts at you and through other people to reveal to you how you used to think and how you used to be and what used to happen in your life. But God is now in charge of your life. He's the one working in you. He's the one helping you. He's the one showing you what you should do. He literally he says it in Philippians 2.13, he says, now I living in you, I give you the energy. I give you the energy to have the power and the desire to want to do those things that please me. The things that please him is what his perfect will is for you. And his perfect will for you is what he prefers. And what he prefers is his absolute best for you. That's what that means. And his absolute best is wrapped in his love for you because when we say, I love you, when God says, I love you, he's saying, I got you. What that literally means in the Greek definition, it means I prefer you. I prefer you to have my absolute best. I prefer you to have what all I have made available to you and for you because I love you. And he proves it by showing you the cross of Jesus and giving you the Bible and giving you the transitions and the transitions translations of the Bible so that you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that God loves you and he paid the greatest price he could pay in all eternity for you which is the death of his son which is his greatest treasure so that you in accepting him would be his prized possession as he tells you in 1 Peter 2 9. So God is doing in May, just ima- un- unimaginably more than you can even ask, think, hope, or imagine for you because he loves you. 
And there's something incredible about that comforting that God gives to you to know that you are so special to him that he would give his son for you. He tells you in John 3, 16, that he so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son for you that who shall ever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. But what he's telling you is that life is living in him and with him because he tells you in Colossians 3, 3, he says you died and your life is hidden with Christ in him. That means you have been stamped with the seal of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit living in you has stamped you with the seal of God, which nobody can open up, nobody can take off, and you are sealed as God's personal possession forever. And he loves you and he wants you to know he's done that. So it's my prayer today that you would understand as we go into understanding who you are in Christ and who he is in you, and that now Christ has come to be with you and to live in you, that you would know that the Father of glory, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, that he would impart to you the riches of the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of revelation to know him through the deep intimacy of the knowledge of him that the Holy Spirit reveals to you, that the Holy Spirit would illuminate the eyes of your imagination, that he flood you with light so much that you would experience the full revelation of the hope of his calling, which is the wealth of God's glorious inheritance that he finds in you, his child. That's right. You're his inheritance. I pray that you will constantly and continually experience the immeasurable greatness of God's power made available to you through Faith, which is the God's divine persuasion, is the Holy Spirit revealing to you and testifying with your spirit what God says about you is true about you and that he gives you the confidence and boldness to come and know that because what God says about you is true, because he's persuading you that it's true, that you can come boldly and confidently into the very presence of God and know that he accepts you without any hesitation, that you're holy and blameless and above reproach in his sight, just as he tells you in Ephesians 1, 4, because that's the blood of Jesus. That's the sacrifice of Jesus that did that for you. It's not by your works. It's by the works of the Redeemer, the works of the Savior, the works of the Lord Jesus Christ that makes you acceptable and holy and blameless in the sight of God. He literally wraps you in Christ's love. He sees you through Christ's blood and he accepts you as his child because he recreated you a new creation fills you with his spirit so now you are a new creation filled with the spirit of God you are not that same person you were before Christ came to live in you and that's the point that you have to know because he told you when he said that I'm going to come and I'm going to live with you he called himself Emmanuel God with you and now he's God in you because he comes to live in you which is is Christ in you, the hope of glory, as he tells you in Colossians 1 27. And the reason is that if I'm living in you, he tells you, who can be against you? Who can come against you? Who can tell you you're not who you say, who I say you are, but you're who I am. You are who I say you are, and who I say you are is what God says you are, because I, being God, tell you what I thought, what I made, and how I did it, and who I chose, and I'm not changing my mind about you, because I'm immutable. I can never change. I'm, I'm not a man that I should lie. I'm not a man to change my mind. That's what I tell you in Numbers 23, 14. That's what I tell you in Malachi 3, 6. I don't change my mind about you. The enemy and the devil and all these people around you say, well, you know, God's going to change your mind about you if you don't do it this way. I don't change my mind about you. And I'm the one who stirs your most holy emotions to want to do those things I want you to do because it's the love of God in you that sparks your life to want to do those things that please me because when my love is filling you full, which it does when you were born again, then you want to love as I love. And it just is a growing love that just keeps getting bigger and bigger and transcending in you so that you want to do those things that please me. And that's what you do when you know that you love somebody and you love them. They, You want to please them. You want to be good to them. You want to do those things that make them happy. And that's what I'm telling you. I am the one who placed my love in you and my love in you, as I said in 1 Corinthians 4, 1 John 4, 18 and 19, is stirring you. It's filling you with that desire to want to love others as I love you. So you're not going to get away from loving others. So when you treat others wrongly, when you sit there and you have complaints and things against others, then you have to realize 
That's not my, that's not me operating in you. That's the enemy showing you how he's operating around you. And he's causing you to feel things and want to do things and say things to people because it's your emotions. And I'm telling you, I'm greater than your emotions. And I'm the one who controls you. I'm the one that helps you. I'm the one who gives you my impulses to come and overcome those situations and circumstances that enemy places you in because I love you. And I want you to be victorious in every situation and circumstance. You don't have to be concerned about the things that the world's concerned for and with because you're not of this world. You're of born of my spirit made into my likeness and my image. You're my image bearer, as I tell you in Genesis 1, 26 and 27, to reflect my image throughout all creation for all time. That means you're filled with God. You're filled with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, as I tell you in Colossians 2, 9 and 10. You are filled with absolutely all my fullness. You have all the Godhead dwelling in you. There's nothing that you can get any more of me because you have all of me living in you. It's what God tells you. So if you have God living in you, then who can be against you who created all things? And just with a thought, he can wipe out everything that comes against you. But he wants you to recognize he's already working around you and helping you in all the things that you need. You do not have to fear because fear fears God. Fear is a spirit that comes from the enemy, and the enemy fears God, and you glow with the Shekinah glory of God in you and a dark world around you because the light of God is in you, and he shines. He shines brightly, and you're a beacon of hope to those souls that are lost because they recognize in their prayer being, in their inner being, that you have the hope of God in you. You have Christ in you, and you're drawn they're drawn to you because they love their creator. They may not voice it. They may not recognize it. But there's a void that only the creator of the universe who created them in his likeness and image can only feel. And he's in you and they're attracted to you because they want to know him. That's the reason they come to you. That's the reason they're walking towards you. It's because God draws them because Christ in you draws them to himself to bring them to the Father and you become his image bearer, you reflect his image and his likeness so that you become his personal representative. He says you're his ambassador, as he tells you in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 20. He's telling you that's what's happened around you. And people say ugly things to you sometimes because the Spirit of God's working on them and they're coming towards you and they don't know why they want to even talk to you. But it's because the Spirit of God in you draws them because he's working on them, stirring their holy emotions and their mind and their mindsets to want to come to God. So not everything that you see around you and every complaint that you hear about you is really directed towards you. It's the confusion of the enemy stirring their hearts and minds not to want to know God and they see him in you and then they see a reflection of themselves and what they're not in the mirror of your life because you have God living in you who's reflecting himself to them and they don't like that and they don't like seeing that and that's what he's telling you in Romans 2 1 he's telling you they see you and they complain about you they speak ugly about you because they see God in you and they are guilty of the very things they say about you because the God who's the mirror of your life reflecting their life in them, toward them, he's showing them that they are not like you are and they want to bring you down because they don't like being in your presence because you have living God in you and they can't stand it. And the only way to overcome it is to accept Christ's love for themselves. And when they do, then they reflect God's love just like you do and then they become an image bearer because now they're beaming with God's glory and when God's glory beams through them, then they know how other people thought. So now God gives you the power and desire to overcome those thoughts, feelings, and purposes that are not from him so that you can redeem another one by leading them to Christ. You lead them to Christ because they're God's property. God loves them and he wants the best for them and he wants the best for you. So don't lean to your own understanding. Don't be concerned about the things that are going on in your life. You trust God always. Know that God is more aware of what's going on around you than you can even imagine. He is the person who loves you. 
He's the one that calls you by name and says, I chose you for myself because I love you and I want you to be my child. And that's what God's telling you. He's telling you that I have made myself fully known to you so that you can make you and I can make you fully known to others because if I'm living in you, I'm not going to be a darkened in any way. I'm going to shine a bright light. My light of my life, of my love, and my presence in you, through you, so that people are drawn to you so they can know me. I am the God of all creation. Nothing is too difficult for me. I'm the one who has sent my anointed one to shepherd you and shepherd the world, and to keep no records of transgressions. Because as I told you, I didn't come to condemn the world, but through Christ to reconcile the world back to me. There is a judgment, but it's not today. And you have the privilege of coming to accepting the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you've accepted that privilege of accepting Christ and being a member of God's own household and a member of his family and a child of God, then God says to you, I'm am very much pleased with you. I'm satisfied to have you as my child. I wanted you as my child. I sent my greatest treasure to make sure you could be my child. And by accepting my invitation, you have accepted the invitation of God to do and more than you can even think, hope, ask, or imagine by him working effectively in you, causing it to happen. God is always for you. He never forgets you. He never forsakes you. He never doesn't think about you. As a matter of fact, he tells you in Psalms 139, 16 and 17, he's thinking about you every moment of every day. He's telling you that. And why? Because you're precious to him. He loves you. He wants you to hear him. He wants you to see him. He wants you to be assured of his presence with you that you can accomplish anything with him. And that's what he's telling you in 1 Corinthians 22, 17 through 19. I mean, 1 Chronicles 22, 17 through 19. God's presence was assures you. It's what assures you that he's for you, he's with you, and that he will conquer anything in front of you so that you will know that he is present with you at all times, at all places, that he's always going to be there. He's never going to leave you, which means his power is available to you, and nobody can come against you that can hurt you. And that's what he's telling you. It's the reason that you feel hurt sometimes in this world is because you're listening to how the world speaks to you instead of how God speaks to you who's living in the world. God lives in you. He loves you, and he wants you to hear his voice more than he wants you to hear the voice of the world. The voice of the world will upset you. And Jesus said, listen, my peace I have given to you, the peace that the world doesn't know. Well, the only way you can experience that peace is by Christ himself living in you, generating that peace in you, and then demonstrating it through you when it doesn't make sense. And that's how you know God's doing it. It's the same way with his joy. When you sit there and you're around things that just don't really make you feel joyful, and then the joy of the Lord bubbles up in you, he says, I'm your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength, just as he says in Nehemiah 8.10. They listen. God is the one who's drinking in you, just as he promised. He says, I understand that you're weak. I understand that you're weak and you can't accomplish these things without me. That's what first that's what Second Corinthians twelve, nine and ten was talking about. He says I've given you my grace because I know you're weak. And in your weakness, my grace shows up most effectively and reveals my power in you, working through you, that it's me doing it and not you. That's what I'm telling you. When you feel weak, that's when you're the strongest, and that's where the enemy gets really, really concerned because he knows these truths, and he knows these truths to be true, and he's been defeated by them for eons of time because I don't change, and my power in you doesn't change, and the power that created him is living in you, so greater is he that's in you than the enemy who's around you and against you. As a matter of fact, I'm the one who lives in you, who created all things, and my power is greater than all things. And with just a word, you can I can speak worlds into existence like I did. I said, light be, light was. I'm just telling you. God is for you. He's with you and he's around you and he's among you. He's never going to leave you. He's never going to forsake you. So you can trust in him with all your heart and know that he being for you is going to do only good things for you because he says, my perfect will for you is my perfect love. 
And everybody's trying to figure out, what's my purpose, Lord? What's my purpose? Your purpose is to love the Lord and let him love you and let him show you what he wants to do through you and then believe him, accept what he's wanting to do through you and then walk in it. That's what his purpose is because he says, my purpose for you is my plan for you and I'm going to accomplish my plan for you. I hear people right now and I can say, well, you know, I'm not sure about my purpose, Lord. I'm not sure what you're wanting to do to me. Well, I can assure you that he's got a plan and a purpose for you and you're living it out on a day-by-day basis. You're living it out around the people that you work with, all the people you associate with, your family, and all the people you come in contact with. Let me give you a simple example. You go to the grocery store, somebody's not doing well and they're having a little confusion at the line. Do you sit there and you pray for them or you sit there just irritated about them? Do you realize that that person in front of you probably has all sorts of things going on and God gave you a great opportunity to just silently pray for them say, Lord, I don't know what they're going through, what's frustrating them and what's causing them to have a problem, but I know you do. And I know that this isn't the way you created a person to act, but there has to be something that's really frustrating them. So I pray in the name of Jesus that you would just help them, that you would guide them and direct them and Give them the things that they need, the wisdom they need, the direction they need. And when you do that, guess what you just did? You changed your whole attitude toward that person. Well, the attitude of the world is, you know, you need to get out of the way because I want to get through and that's my time in line. I don't want that. You didn't realize that was a divine appointment that God gave you to be the prayer warrior for that person that couldn't do it themselves. And he gave you a special privilege. And you don't know what that one prayer could do that could change the world simply because you thought it was in a no place checkout line at the grocery store. Let me tell you something. I've been in those grocery stores and God's had me to do things from time to time. And I was like, I had to bite my tongue and I had to sit there and say, Lord, you really want me to do it here? And he answered, yes. And that's when you see them reckless. When you want to do it in a place that you feel weak, you don't feel like it should be done there because you're trying to tell God, no, God, I don't, I don't want to do it here. He says, can, you, can we go outside? Nope, here. Let me tell you. God has a purpose and a plan. And these are simple purposes and plans. But if you start recognizing them as simple things like this, then all of a sudden you start recognizing the big things that he's been showing you all the time. You've been missing because you've been trying to focus on God to act off with a purpose like the world wants you to act with a purpose because it has these strategies on how you should do a purpose, a plan, and a perfection in life. But it's not God's ways. That's what he's telling you. Listen, God's ways always lead to God's results, and the world's way always leads to the world's results. So you just have to ask yourself a question. Are you seeing the results that you think God's looking for? Are you seeing the results that the world says is acceptable behavior? Listen, God's thoughts are higher than the world's thoughts, and God's thoughts are higher than your thoughts. So let God work in you to help you to help others, because every person you come across to is an absolute opportunity that God's given you to help a person. You don't necessarily have to touch them. You don't have to talk to them, but you can pray for them. And that's what God really wants you to understand. He's interceding for you. The Holy Spirit's interceding for you right now so that you can do the things that God would have you to do to complete the purposes that God's given you and the design destiny that he planned for you that fits in his perfect design plan for all eternity. And he's also got the Lord Jesus Christ praying for you. That's what he's telling you in Romans 8. He's telling you both the Holy Spirit and the Lord Jesus Christ is praying and interceding for you. So if they're doing that for you on a moment-by-moment basis so that you can become all the best that you can be, do one simple act of kindness and do it for another. You'll find that your life will be enlightened. Your life will not only be enlightened, but your spirit will be lifted. And the things that are bothering you God has a simple way of working them out for you when you do these things, I'm telling you. Not because you did something for God, but because your perspective changed from seeing things from the world to seeing things in God's perspective and how God works. And all of a sudden, you start seeing that he's working around you all over the places. And the things that you have been missing, you're not missing anymore because now you fixed your eyes on Jesus and what Jesus would do, like he says in Hebrews 12 too. And you want to do those things that please him because you love him. And when you do, you see all the things he's doing around you that you miss because you're thinking that he's working like the world works and he doesn't he's God he works like God works not like the world works so trust him completely rely on him depend on him and he will show you that he is doing things all around you 
he tells you this in Proverbs 3, 5, and 7. He says, lean not to your own understanding because you're finite. You really don't know what all's going on. You're living in a world that you don't recognize that the physical signs that you see are so small compared to the spiritual things that are going on around you. And I want you, as my spiritual child, born in my spirit, to see the things I'm doing around you so that you know that I'm a good, good father who has a great, great plan for you and that you can know by depending on me, relying on me, and leaning not to your understanding, which is very limited, but looking to me, who is very unlimited that you're going to see great and mighty things that you've missed and you're going to be so delighted so excited that every day you're going to wake up refreshed saying lord what's next and that's where i want you son that's where i want your daughter so that you're looking to me depending on me and you'll always find me there because i haven't left i'm always with you and that's the truth in jesus name amen and amen